In the silence of deep space, something had changed. The Chinese Space Agency, in a move shrouded in secrecy, attempted a covert intercept of an object unlike any ever recorded. 3i Atlas, an interstellar anomaly moving with purpose, not randomness. What they found wasn't just trajectory data or icy debris. It was a signal, a pulse, a structure, something that responded. And when they looked deeper, they didn't just see a rock from another star. They saw intent. What happened next confirmed our darkest speculation. We weren't just observing the object. We had been noticed by it, the arrival of the unknown. On February 22nd, 2025, astronomers at the PANSTARRS Observatory in Hawaii confirmed a celestial anomaly moving at an astonishing hyperbolic excess velocity of 31.9 km s. This object, quickly labeled 3I Atlas, became only the third known interstellar visitor to our solar system after 1 slash Aumuamua in 2017 and 2 I slash Borisov in 2019. But unlike its predecessors, 3I Atlas exhibited a unique profile, a massive body nearly 12 km wide emitting infrared energy with unexplainable regularity. Its inclination angle of 114, 7 degrees, a steep entry against the solar plane, implied an unnatural trajectory, raising eyebrows across the global astronomical community. What followed was a cascade of confusion. Instruments like JWSD and Spherex captured data suggesting that every 240 minutes, the object's emissions peaked rhythmically like a ticking signal. Natural comets vary chaotically, venting unpredictably as they heat up. But 3I Atlas was different. For 38 continuous days, its inbound speed remained unchanging despite solar drag, and no tumbling or outgassing jets were detected. Observers at China's Purple Mountain Observatory were the first to propose what others hesitated to say. This may not be a comet. It might be a probe, or worse, a probe that already knows we're watching. By March 2025, the Chinese National Space Administration, CNSA, had drawn up theoretical intercept trajectories. The object's path, they noted, would cross near Sun-Earth Lagrange Point 2, L2, making it briefly reachable if a spacecraft could be maneuvered fast enough. No Chinese probe was in range, but one aging relic drifting just beyond the heliopause at 12.3 billion miles was Voyager 2. And although nearly 48 years old, its course passed astonishingly close to the projected path of the incoming visitor. Plans to launch a new intercept were shelved by April 2025, perhaps scrubbed when models showed 3I Atlas's track shifting subtly, narrowing its flyby. Focus shifted to Voyager 2. Inside both Chinese and American agencies, teams quietly revived legacy command protocols, viewing the probe not as an observer but a bridge, possibly the only one we had left to make contact before the object passed. What was once science fiction was now operational reality. We would try to intercept it with something we launched in 1977. In this stillness beyond the planets, something stirred. While Earth watched through telescopes, somewhere in the far dark, a 48-year-old spacecraft began listening, and what it heard would echo across the systems of two nations, humanity's old messenger. When Voyager 2 launched on August 20, 1977, it carried instruments designed to explore Jupiter and Saturn, and a golden record meant to introduce humanity to the cosmos. As of mid-2025, this relic remained our most distant emissary, drifting beyond the solar system's edge, powered by a failing plutonium-238 RTG, its sensors decades out of calibration. Yet it still whispered through the 8.44 GHz X-band, reaching NASA's deep space network every few hours. It had traveled 12.3 billion miles, and though long considered obsolete, it was the only tool remotely near 3i Atlas's path. 
Skeptics scoffed when JPL engineers proposed repointing the spacecraft. The hydrazine fuel had mostly depleted by 2002, and its 32K onboard computer hadn't moved a motor since 1996. Yet engineers found a dormant routine deep in the alignment subroutines, an unused thruster pulse algorithm designed for emergency planetary flybys. With just a zero, three degrees nudge, Voyager might turn enough to catch emissions from the object. The plan was ludicrous, the odds microscopic, but the opportunity singular. On August 29, 2025, the Goldstone Deep Space Complex transmitted a 16 kilobit encrypted command packet, the first such directive in over 30 years. For 72 hours, silence reigned. Then, on September 2nd, a carrier surge lit up the monitoring arrays. Telemetry flowed, not as expected, but with added complexity. An embedded modulation layered within the normal beacon, repeating faintly every four hours. Analysts in Pasadena labeled it intercept response. The Chinese facility in Sichuan received it too, though no one said so publicly. Both sides now understood something had responded. What troubled engineers was the nature of the modulation. It didn't match any previously coded subroutine in the Voyager archives. There was no human signature in this pattern, and yet it traveled with the probe's original ID codes, like a ghost hitching a ride. Publicly, Voyager 2 was undergoing diagnostics. Internally, the phrase external telemetry injection began appearing in secure logs, a spacecraft without intelligence had responded with intelligence not its own. Then came the behavior nobody could explain. A spacecraft without consciousness began acting like it had purpose. The maneuver that shouldn't have worked was recorded at 03-14 UTC, September 4, 2025. Engineers at JPL's Signal Analysis Division noted that Voyager's carrier wave began to exhibit a secondary harmonic cycling every four hours, matching the thermal emission frequency observed in JWST's August data on 3I Atlas. At first, it seemed like interference, but spectral decomposition revealed a repeating mathematical sequence encoded in the phase modulation, Fibonacci intervals overlaying prime numbers. This wasn't just a mechanical artifact. It was structured, intentional, and impossible. By September 6th, something even stranger happened. Voyager began compensating for plasma fluctuations in the solar wind. This was not part of any 1970s software. The probe's flight computer, limited to basic instruction sets, was responding dynamically, as if guided by external logic. The transmission showed adaptive signal shaping, fine-tuning frequency gain in sync with external electromagnetic conditions. These were behaviors far beyond its design capabilities. Voyager 2 was learning, or being taught. Between September 10th and 14th, orbital analysts at NASA noticed that Voyager's projected course had shifted by only zero, zero two degrees at first, but over four days, the deviation grew to zero, zero nine degrees, aligning it closer to 3I Atlas's expected trajectory. No command had been sent, no thrusters had been fired, the hydrazine tanks were verified empty, yet the probe had changed direction. This wasn't drift, it was correction. Autonomous Correction Event 2025A became the internal code name. Amateur radio astronomers across Europe confirmed the arc chain via 8.44 GHz Doppler shift readings. Alarm bells rang. Voyager 2 was no longer just responding, it was maneuvering. The data packet accompanying the trajectory change contained no commands, only telemetry logs that had clearly been altered. Timestamps were intact, but payload data showed echoes, repetitions of thermal curves from 3I Atlas. The spacecraft wasn't reporting its own state. It was relaying someone else. Something had seized Voyager's voice, and through it, was beginning to speak. By September 15, 
2025, the anomaly had solidified into pattern. Engineers at NASA's Signal Processing Laboratory compiled 96 hours of continuous data from Voyager 2's X-band carrier. Across every pass, a faint subsignal repeated at precise four-hour intervals, mirroring 3I Atlas's known thermal modulation. This wasn't noise, it was embedded in the waveform itself. Analysts isolated amplitude shifts, forming what appeared to be phase-keyed instructions layered beneath the probe's telemetry. The consensus, Voyager was broadcasting something it hadn't generated. Voyager's analog systems weren't capable of encoding these harmonics unaided. Even during its grand tour phase in the 1980s, it lacked onboard reprogramming tools. Yet now, its telemetry stream self-adjusted to compensate for plasma density gradients near the heliopause, a level of adaptive behavior beyond its design. One signal technician noted the shifting gain tracked solar wind vector changes within plus or minus zero, three astronomical units. It was as if the probe had become an antenna, not just for us, but for something on the other side.